Hi, everybody. It's Leslie Denny calling, and I'm readjusting my gene belt here with my microphone. So I hope you're having a really great day today. And thanks for joining us for ball class. Um, we're going to be working on hips a lot today, but we're going to be inclusive of the shoulders. So I hope that's something that you're looking forward to. So just go ahead and meet me on the mat and let's talk. Here we go. So you'll want to have um, your block, large ball, small twin set, as well as a strap handy for your practice today. And if you're using any essential oils, be sure to have those as well. Um, the phrase that I brought to you today I thought was really impactful for me. And it was reflective of a lot of I guess sometimes when we're in tumultuous times that uh, what, what sometimes happens for us is we feel so strongly about our opinion about something. And this can be anything. It can be either, you know, in the world events or it could be in your own home about where to position uh, the soda bottles in the refrigerator and things like that. Just it could be anything. But when we feel so strongly about something and we want to convey what our perspective is, it usually has a counter effect where people just don't hear it. They're not listening as well. And Albert Einstein said that peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. So, when you think in terms of like trying to convey your opinion, let's get back to the soda bottles in the refrigerator. Um, say for instance, you, you explain, gosh, you know, these soda bottles need to be on this side of the refrigerator and that's the way I want it. And it's almost by a force. Whereas if you explain and say, you know, if I position the soda bottles over here, then that gives me room for all of these vegetables over here that I need to find space for. But if I put the soda bottles in errant locations, then I just don't have that compartment of space that I need. Then that completely shifts everything. And oftentimes we feel so strongly about our opinion about things that we forget to explain why we feel that way and why it's important to us. And usually when you begin to explain why something is important to you, it, I know for me, it tampens down the emotion that can be involved with me feeling that way. I know for a long time, I'm a big towel user in my house. Um, I, you know, uh, I, I tend to, when I'm working on a regular basis and I'm going to a number of places, I have to sometimes take two showers a day. And my husband prefers these really fluffy towels. And I like these other towels uh, that are much thinner. And so I was constantly putting up the towels that I liked and then he would move and move them and put the towels that he liked. And, and we were beginning to get in this conversation about what towels to use and saying, you know, he'd say, I really like the fluffy towels. They just feel so much better and they're so much easier to dry off with. And, and I was frustrated and I, and I said one day, you know, the reason that I really like the thinner towels is because sometimes I take two showers in a day, depending on what my day is running like. And the fluffy towels aren't dry. They're like still wet by the time I finish my, you know, go to take my second shower. And he said, oh, well, that makes total sense. Then go for it. Let's use the thinner towels. And it never was a discussion again after that. And if he feels like using a fluffy towel, he can go get a fluffy towel and he'll use those occasionally. But for me, I prefer this. And he always knows to put out my towel as the thin towel. So it completely changed the paradigm of what we were talking about. Before it felt frustrating because I kept having to use a towel I didn't want to use. And then all of a sudden when I took the time to explain why it was important to me, it was like peace among the valley again. It, it was just no big deal. So when we equate that to our practice, 
sometimes we fight to make something happen. You might remember last week we did a stress relieving ball rollout and it was very, very gentle. There was no forceful intention. It was just really easy. And sometimes it feels good to kind of work at a high rate of intensity, but many times the peace comes about when we just let things unfold. It's almost like we create this understanding in our body that something has a lot of tension and we've just got to take the time that's needed to be able to help it come back to feeling comfortable again or bringing about peace in the body again. So today's practice and as we start to move through the hips and we'll be inclusive of the shoulders as well, we'll be attacking it at cross di diagonals. So it'll be a little different practice for you today, which I like to be able to provide you with something a little different. So come to a comfortable seated posture. And just take a few deep breaths. And just think of the word peace. And all that it means all that it feels like just to utter that word. And draw the hands to heart center. And with a peaceful intention, let's open this practice with the sacred sound of Om. Take a deep inhale. Om. So let's do a check-in. Usually the nice check-in is just to roll on your back and kind of stretch your legs out. And for some of us, that definitely feels uncomfortable. So if it feels too uncomfortable, feel free to just keep the knees bent a little bit. Otherwise, see what it feels like just to stretch out onto the mat and notice where you feel tension. I always point out my first load of tension is at the low back because I have a tendency to get a little bit more of a lordotic curve because I have pelvis that tilts forward. So I take in a lot of tension in that area. So just check in throughout your body and notice, notice what you notice. Maybe you notice things happening at the back or the shoulders feel like they're a little tight, either rolling forward or not. And then notice how the legs feel, you know, kind of how your feet feel, backs of the knees. Good. And then roll yourself up. So we're going to be doing, a, in the beginning, a diagonal movement. So what I want you to do is take out the two small balls out of the toes. You may want to use the block for your head, it's up to you. And then when you roll it back, take one small ball right to the inside of your right shoulder blade. 
and then with the opposite ball, place it square in the center of your left buttock. So we're gonna run a diagonal with this one. And we're actually gonna be moving both the leg and the arm separately, but to be able to equate a little bit of release. So sweep that right arm up and around and create a nice big circling motion. Now, for most of us, we use the small balls because to use the larger balls in this particular movement, it would place a lot of tension and load at the sacrum, your low part of your spine between your hips, um, just because one side would be lifted up so much and the other side's down, it would place a lot of compression that would feel uncomfortable. So that's why the small balls come in really handy. And as we know from our practice, if you're a regular attendee, which I hope you are, then what we notice is when we do something for one area of the body, it'll be felt in the other part of the body. So the work that we're doing in this shoulder area right here is going to translate very well towards the hips. So you're just circling the arm in one direction and then go ahead and change the direction that you're circling that arm. And just take some really deep breaths. I'm breathing deep and I, I'm gonna probably breathe a lot through my mouth today because I, I tend to do that anyway, but it really, I don't know, it feels like a great peace giver, if you will, for me to breathe through my mouth, especially on the exhale. Good. And then just draw that arm out to the side and see if you can rest it down towards the floor. For some of us, you may have a lot of, you know, discomfort in the inside of that shoulder blade. So resting the arm all the way down to the floor may not feel right to you. So just do the best you can. If you can't get it to the floor, bend the elbow a little bit or draw the hand in towards the shoulder because usually that will lessen the tension. It's usually on that extension that we really feel a load of discomfort and that might make it a little better. And then just take a few more breaths right here, nice and deep. Good. And then relax the arm alongside of you. And now on the side where the smaller ball is at the hip or in the buttock, go ahead and lift that, keep that knee bent and circle that knee around. You might have to hold on to the edges of your mat to give yourself a little stability. And that's okay because sometimes that just helps a little bit. And keep circling that knee around. and then circle it in the opposite direction. Good. Then go ahead and release the foot down to the mat and then just drop the knee open and just relax as much as you can right there. Just keep that knee dropped open. Sometimes it's a little easier if we extend the leg out. So as opposed to the arm where when the arm was extended, it actually felt better to bend the elbow and draw the hand in. With the knee, when the knee is bent a lot, it puts a lot more load on the adductors, the inside of the thigh. But when we start to extend the leg out a little bit, that adductor tension releases quite a bit. So you can make an adjustment there just depending on what you're needing. And you don't want to be super distracted. You just want to feel a kind of a gentle release as you're relaxing into it.
So just take two more breaths. Good. Now bring that knee up. The knees are bent and you're just going to kind of rock your body along the mat up and down. And notice that I'm kind of lifting the chest, arching the back and then flattening that low back against the mat and rolling the shoulders forward. Just an arch of the back and then flattening that back towards the mat, rolling the shoulders forward and just keep rocking into it. Good. And then release the balls and check in. When you release the balls, stretch out and notice if you feel a difference. I sure do. My low back is much more relaxed now. I, that's the first thing that I notice. And the shoulders are coming a little closer towards the mat. So that one diagonal move is a real nice way to get a good overall body experience. So let's switch it to the other side. We're gonna take that small ball to the inside of the left shoulder blade, and then the other ball to the center of that buttock. And we're gonna switch what we just did. So just keep the hands as stable as you can, and then drop that right knee open. Remember, you can extend the leg out farther if you're feeling too much tension on the adductor on the inside of your thigh. So just feel free to make those little adjustments. And just take some deep breaths. And we're going to back into this. And then go ahead and lift up that leg and now circle it around. So we're kind of working at an opposite direction. And what I want you to think about is the last time we circled and then lengthened out or stretched out that um, leg or arm, notice which one feels better to you so that you kind of imprint that in your head and kind of hold on to that. and then change the direction if you like. You don't always have to do all of it. You can just do what you need to. And then release that foot down to the mat and then stretch that left arm out to the side. Remember, you can bend the elbow and draw that hand in if that feels a little better to you, or even drop the arm down lower and just check in and notice how this feels, but take several deep breaths. Then lifting up that arm, circle the arm around in first one direction, either way. As big a circle as you like, or as small as you like.
and then circle it in the opposite direction from wherever you started. I noticed for me a little bit more effort when I go on this left arm clockwise. It just takes a little bit more work for me to adjust through it. And then relax the arms down, knees are bent, and you're gonna arch that back out and then roll the shoulders forward. And it's just gonna give you that little subtle roll, really in just a short distance. We're not rolling big time, not yet. And then release the balls and do a check-in as you stretch out. Ah, oh, just see how that feels. For me, I feel such a release of tension. It's crazy. It feels so good right now. So let's give ourselves a little stretch. So you can place the balls to the side. You might want to grab your strap and then come to an upright seated posture and we'll move into Janar Shoshasana. So I'm extending out my left leg. I'm gonna use my strap today, anchor it at the end of my foot, hold on with my right hand and bring that right shoulder towards that left knee. And just take about two or three more deep breaths. And then release from there and switch it to the other side. And then release from there. Good. How does that feel? Let's kind of do a check-in, get a little water if you need it. And then we're going to close those balls a little closer together. And this will feel a little uncomfortable. But if it feels too uncomfortable, you just back off because this is your time. So we're going right back to the small balls. And we're still working at a diagonal. So this time, I'm going to take that small ball to the lower inside edge of my shoulder blade, which is a lot more of a, of a, I don't know, I want to say a spot that you can feel a lot more because you're getting towards the lower part of your chest, um, the thoracic area of your spine, the supper portion. And when you get closer towards the bottom of it, there's just more of an increase in sensitivity. Whereas up above, you've just got a lot more density than support to be able to protect you from being super sensitive. On the left hip, because remember we're on the right shoulder, on the left hip, we're going to take it closer to the top of the hip. And you might want to hold on to your mat. And I'm just going to roll circularly right here. The first thing that I can tell you is that I just got a big energy like dump. I, I just feel like my body just woke up from that. Um, it's probably a little bit of the adrenaline that's kind of running through me from this, but also I cleared out my nasal passages. They were a little stuffy nose this morning from just the pollen count and um, my head feels very clear right now. 
So once you do that little roll and you can go in both directions or just one direction, if one direction feels better to you, then just rest and you're keeping the knees bent and you want to try to relax that shoulder back as much as you can and take a few deep breaths right here. Good, and then go ahead and release the balls and check in. That had a very dramatic effect for my body because those were two hot spots for me. They may not have been for you, but for me, they're pretty, pretty good hot spots. So we're gonna switch the diagonal. Now we're gonna move that left ball into the inside of that lower left shoulder blade and place the right ball um, pretty much to the center of the top of that hip. So you're still in more what I would call a bony prominent area of your pelvis. You shouldn't feel like the small of your back, the low back is, is really compromised. And then I'm just holding onto my mat and I'm circling. And it can get a little intense here because we're really working areas that don't have as much, oh, I wanna call it almost like muscular um, presence so that you are, are just kind of working into a cushioned area. It's a little tougher. And then you can change the direction that you're rolling. Good, and then one more deep breath here. And then just try to relax. Just let that shoulder drop back. Good. And then release the balls from there. Stretch it out, check in. And then we'll go right back to Jhana Shirshasana. <laughs> so as you roll back up, you can use your strap or not, your choice. Right foot to the inside of that left leg and then reach with that right arm to the outside of that left foot and just hold on to the stretch. and then release and switch it to the other side. and then release from there. Come to the seated posture and just check in. For me, I feel knees are open quite a bit more. My shoulders are relaxed. My low back definitely feels much less tension. My hips feel a little softer. So we're gonna keep that diagonal presence, but we're gonna flip it to the front side of the body. With this one, we need a little bit more assist. So we're gonna be working from the inside of the shoulder at the pectoralis on the right side to the hip flexor on the left. And you'll have a couple of choices on this. 
So when I flip over, I definitely want to use the small ball. But what is really helpful is when I make use of the block. I place the small ball right at the edge corner, right there. And then I'm going to place my inside right shoulder right there. So because I'm on the inside of the right shoulder, I'm going to place the opposite ball to the front of the hip flexor on the left side. And then I'm just going to rest myself here and take a few deep breaths. You notice that I'm just kind of stacking my palm in a fist and I'm using my chin to rest there, or I could rest my forehead there, whichever one feels best. That actually feels better. And I hope you can hear me okay. So from here, I'm just going to take a few deep breaths, just relaxing. And just notice what you're still holding on to. Sometimes that arm just doesn't want to release all the way. And then from here, I'm going to curl my toes under and just kind of notice that I'm just pushing off of my toes and rocking my body forward and back. And Hardly at all. Just a little bit of like nudging, rocking motion. Your choice on that left hip flexor group is you can also use the large ball. So if you want to switch it off to that, but I wouldn't use the large ball for the chest in this setup. And I'm just rocking. And from here, I'm going to sweep that right arm behind me with the palm facing up, and I'm just going to shrug and circle that shoulder around. Then relax the arm. And then if you can, draw the ankle of that opposite leg. So you're on that left leg where the ball is. And what that does is it's helping stretch through the quads, obviously, but it's also really doing a good compression into the ball for the hip flexors. So just let yourself take a couple of breaths here, if it's comfortable. Good. And then release from there, and you're going to push back to your child's pose and just stretch it out. And as you come forward, you'll switch it off to the opposite side. So we're going to move the block over, placing that ball down into the inside corner because now we're going to get to the inside of the left shoulder blade, hip flexor on the right hip. If you had trouble grabbing your ankle that last time for the quad stretch, you might want to have a strap handy if that makes it easier. And as I bring my body weight forward, and I'm going to actually move my mic really quick here so that you're not feeling, hearing scratchiness. And as I lay here, I'm pressing that ball right to the inside of my shoulder blade. And then the opposite ball goes to the front of the hip flexor right there. And then I'm just relaxing. That's all I'm doing initially. Remember, you just want to relax your body as much as possible. Keep repositioning the arm any way that you need to so that you can, making sure that you're 
head is supported and sometimes people like to just turn the head to one side and rest it to the mat but this feels a little better to me to use my fist to support it and just kind of make peace with the pose just making any final adjustments so that you can relax keep taking some deep breaths And then curling your toes under, just kind of push off from your toes so that you're kind of rocking your body forward and back. You can probably hear my breathing pattern here where it's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And then just relax and bring that arm to your back. Palm is facing up. It's really opening up through the shoulder. And try to find a rest spot where you can take a few breaths. And then relax that arm and either with a strap or just grab onto the ankle and give yourself that good um, quad stretch. Whoops, let me fall my balls. And when you do that quad stretch, I just want you to kind of draw yourself into the posture that feels best for you right there. And if the quad stretch doesn't work for you, you don't feel a need to have to do that at all. You can just keep resting. Because we're just going to take about three or four more breaths here. So just breathe right, nice and even throughout the posture. Hold. Good. And then one or two more breaths there. Excellent. Then when you're ready, push back to your child's pose and just move your equipment to the side. And then come up to your hands and knees and work cat-cow flow, chakra vakasa. Inhale to exhale. Good, and then release and come to a seated posture on your mat and check in. How does that feel? Feels a lot looser for me. So that beginning of our practice, and then we're gonna do a few other things here now as well, but that really is cross purposes. So just think about working a diagonal from one section to the other and then the other section to the other. And 
incorporating small movements. You don't have to do real dramatic movements. Sometimes just resting can make all the difference in the world. So grab a little water if you need to, if you need to do a refresh on an essential oil, change your music, whatever you need to do, go ahead and feel free. And now let's work on our calves. So calves, wonderful area. We did this as one of the stress relieving points, if you remember on the last session that we were together. And we're gonna be making use of all the balls. And I don't know where my other ball went for some reason. It's it decided to leave momentarily. Oh, it's all the way across the room. Well, there you go. So we're gonna first pop the balls real lightly on either side of the calf. And what I want you to think about doing is first rest the foot down so that the calf muscle is very relaxed. And then as you keep the heel resting to the mat, lift the toes up. So now we're stretching through that muscle. And then keep popping and drop the foot back down. That relaxes the muscle again. And then just one more time, lift the toes into that stretch. You'll feel a little bit of work happen within the calf. and then release from there. Okay, on my ball, my big ball just took a vacation to the other side of the room. So instead of me running and grabbing that, I'm gonna use both of my small balls, but you could use the large ball if you'd like to at the back of your calf, as well as your block. So when I rest my calf out onto the block, I'm gonna place the ball, either small or large, right to the inside of that um, calf muscles. So I've got my right leg on the block and you'll notice that I'm pooching out the belly of my gastroc right here, a gastrocnemius right here in this area. And that's where the ball is placed. Then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a massage on the outer side. This is the tibialis anterior and I'm going to feel the shin bone and then run my fingertips to the outside of it laterally and you'll feel that muscle right there. And I'm just gonna roll the ball circularly right there while I'm just doing a straight compression on the cap. That's just a start. And then point the toe and keep massaging. Now, if you all of a sudden go, ah, I can't take it, then relax the foot again. So you have the option to change it if, it, if it's just too tense for you. And then flex the foot, really pointing out through the heel of your foot. I'm using my other hand just to hold that ball in place. I really don't need to do that. It's pretty locked in space. The breadth of my calf muscle pins it very nicely. And then point the toe again. Then release, and you're going to switch it. So now the ball is going to the outside. And if you have a large ball, it's just a very minor shift. I'm using a small ball. And I'm pinning the lateral posterior side, the back edge side out, outside of the gastroc, my calf muscle. And now I'm massaging hoops to the inside. So because those little tiny balls are my Go ahead and hold it in place and just massage into that front side, the anterior side of the inside of your calf, right there. Then point the toe and then flex the foot. And then again, point. and then flex. Got it, and then release from there. That's one soft calf. So when you 
go back to your child's pose just for a moment, you're going to notice that that knee opened up significantly. You may also feel it in the shoulders as well as in the low back and through the hip. So let's switch it off to the other side because it's all about working diagonals today and opposite sides. It's kind of fun, yeah? So we're gonna pop the, light, the calf first. And remember the heel's resting down and the foot is relaxed. You just wanna have the foot nice and relaxed right here. And then press the heel into the ground, lift the toes. That's gonna stretch the muscle, changes the orientation a little bit so that it may feel a little more sensitive. If it feels too sensitive, just dial back. And then drop the toes back down and just keep palpating. And then lift the toes back up again. And then drop the toes one more time. Good. Then from there, you're gonna place one ball just to the inside of the back part of your calf. So you'll see the belly of that muscle kind of pop out. And then you're rolling to that anterior, uh, tibialis anterior, just to the outside of your shin. And just keep rolling, massaging. I tend to like to hold the ball in place, but I probably don't need to do that, especially on this side. And just keep circling that ball up and down. Good. And then you'll switch it to the other side. So as I position that ball out, it's a little tougher because I don't have as much breadth on my calf on the outside here, the, on this, the posterior lateral side here. So I'm just gonna hold it in place with my hand and then massage into the inside front edge of that calf. So this is definitely a different practice that you, for the, it, it would be difficult to do this against the wall. I always like to make a reference to the wall because so many of us like to use the wall for a lot of our rolling. But this particular practice is best served on the mat, if you can do that. Um, there's certain components you could definitely do against the wall, but most of it is really designed to work it on the floor. So just make sure if you feel uh, a lot of tenderness, you can also roll out like a blanket or something and, and do, because there's such minimal movement, you could use a blanket and not get all bound up in it, if you know what I mean. Or double up your mats, you know, get an extra mat to put underneath your regular yoga mat that will help as well. Good. And then release from there. Go ahead and put your balls to the side, lock to the side, and move right back to your hands and knees and begin cat cow flow. And just flowing that spine, tilting up the hips, arching the back out, rolling the shoulders forward. Boy, I can tell you that I feel so much more flexibility throughout my spine and I feel so much less tension in my back. It's really a good feeling. So come back to your seated posture and we're gonna go back into the foot as our last area that we'll roll before we move into Shavasana. The time goes by so freaking fast. 
So I'm going to grab a small ball and I'm staying in a seated position. You'll notice I'm not standing for deep compression. And I'm just going to place the ball right at the instep of my foot. And this is where we leave the diagonals. So you're just going to roll that foot forward and back. And we did this, a, a variation of this last time that we were together. And the reason I like to do it like this sometimes is that there are times when I've seen us put so much pressure from standing position on the ball that it's almost giving a counter reaction. Remember we talked about the parasympathetic nervous system's interplay with connective tissue release. And if you push too hard to the point that you are just, uh, you know, it's super uncomfortable, then it almost sends a negative response to the connective tissue. So the tissue wants to bind up even more to protect you. So we want to roll at a range where it's not that severe. You can do it, you're feeling the effects of it, certainly you'll probably pop over one area that might be a little more sensitive than another, but you can handle it, that's the idea. So just keep nice light rolling. And this is a great technique to do the feet. So like, you know, if you're sitting in front of the TV some night watching your favorite old movie or something, and you can just nice light, roll it's nothing dramatic and i'm just rolling forward and back along that connective tissue at the base of the foot right into the foot bed um, between the heel and the uh, foot bridge so it's just a real nice easy roll and it feels good it really does And then release from there and switch it to the other side. And just give it a nice, easy roll. And some may come closer in with the heel and some farther out. It's just, just kind of follow the path that feels best to you. It's really a lot about this practice is making peace with your body. And sometimes we can't release everything that we would like to release. But understanding is making peace and realizing that some areas are just always going to be a little bit more of a struggle. For me, that's uh, always been my low back and my knees. And I have made peace with the fact that I won't always feel just an absence of tension or discomfort in those areas. But what I can do is I can understand it enough so that I can loosen what I can and then make peace with the rest. And that has felt very good to me for a long time. And just give yourself a little bit more roll and then we'll be ready to settle into Shavasana. Good. And then just release from there. Come back to your comfortable seated posture and check in. Hopefully everything feels really good for you right now. I hope so. That was a different type of role that we did this week with working with the diagonals. So when you get a chance, just go ahead and bring yourself into a comfortable posture for Shavasana for that relaxation. And you can do legs up wall, bolster, whatever feels good to you. I've often said that, you know, gosh, if you're at home and you've got your favorite chair to relax back and you can even do that as well. So whatever feels good to you, just feel free to settle in. Albert Einstein said, peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. And certainly at times when we are working through our practice, kind of finding that, sorry, I had a phone call there that popped up on my cell phone. Um, finding that, that peaceful place is impactful. It's important. So try to understand what you can truly release and then the things that you can't let go of. Maybe just change the mindset and bring some peace 
into that mindset, peace into your heart, just finding that little space to let go, then settle yourself into the mat a little bit more so that your posture is not a distraction, and then keep letting go, and when it's time to come back, I'll come for you. Take a breath and just give yourself a little bit of movement, a little stretch. And then roll yourself over to one side and just take a few breaths right there. When you're ready, gently bring yourself back to an upright seated posture. Let's draw our hands at the heart. We can't find peace with force. It's only through compassion and understanding and empathy that allows us to find our way back to each other and back within ourselves. So make peace with everything you can. And for those things you can't, try to let them go. Let's close this time with the sacred sound of Om. Take a deep inhale. Om. Lokaha, samistaha suki no bhavan too. May all beings everywhere be happy, free, and at peace. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye now. <laughs>